So um, I'd like now to um, um, introduce our uh, second president, who I think is going to talk a little more history. Uh, Gary, uh, after he left us, I thought he was retiring, but he, he did a big job sustainability officer with the county of LA, and now he's uh, chief of staff to Councilwoman Katie Yarovslavsky, if I got that name right. <laughs> Gary. Thank you so much, Linda. It's just great to see you. Great to see everybody. It's been, uh, it's kind of a, I don't know, a long, strange trip, I guess I'll say, is what it's been uh, to come back to NACW, but I'm really, really glad to be here and, and uh, I want to echo uh, Linda's comments about Jenny and, and Ray and the whole Climate Action Reserve team that put this conference on. It's, it is a tremendous amount of work. I know I've seen it firsthand. Uh, so again, a round of applause for them. And I, I asked, uh, when, when I was asked to speak, I asked if we could actually show some pictures of past conferences. And I know Ray does great work archiving, and maybe they'll show, maybe they won't. But hopefully, we'll, you, can, you can reminisce with me as we go. So before I get into the formal remarks, let me just begin by saying that, uh, you know, we're holding this conference on the historic, unceded, and still occupied lands of the Tongva tribe. And I want to offer my respects and honor uh, members of that tribe, both past and present, and recognize they're still here today. So... Yeah, 20 years ago, uh, I was in the city of Los Angeles as the uh, assistant general manager of uh, an environment department. And as that general manager, or assistant general manager, I led the city becoming a founding member of the California Climate Action Registry, uh, which uh, Diane Wittenberg that uh, Linda just noticed uh, or mentioned um, was the founding president. And so... I was at that first conference, uh, and I've been at many conferences sin then, since then, uh, and it's good to be back 20 years later. But I'll tell you the one that stuck out in my mind the most, uh, which was in 2007, and that was a conference in Santa Barbara. Uh, and at that conference, I was uh, still with the city of Los Angeles at the time. Uh, I had a conversation with Diane Wittenberg, and she uh, said, you know, we're going to be uh, going through this transition, and I need someone to help me lead it. Would you be willing to do that? Uh, and I'll tell you, that changed my life. Uh, I uh, gladly accepted that job, left government service, uh, came to work for the California Climate Action Registry, uh, and as Linda pointed out, helped lead it to become the, uh, the Climate Action Reserve. And in doing that, we really, uh, you know, sort of forged our own path and created our own history. And I was, I was proud to be part of that history. You know, we went from uh, an organization that was focused on emissions reporting to one that was really instrumental in, in California's climate market. Uh, and in those 10 years that I was president, we had a lot of great conferences. We had Governor Schwarzenegger, I think, twice. We had Governor Jerry Brown. We had Christiana Figueres of the UNFCCC. We had uh, Gina McCarthy when she was the uh, administrator of US EPA. We had Mary Nichols many times, and Mary Nichols is a rock star and has been a supporter of this organization and, of course, a, a leader uh, for a long time, so I want to just have a shout out to Mary Nichols as well. We also had great people like Fred Krupp, uh, who was the president of uh, Environmental Defense Fund, and Rhea Su, who was the president of NRDC. So this conference has always been a place that attracted luminaries, became a place where uh, real discussion and dialogue around climate change and carbon markets took place. And it uh, it has been... Uh, a place for serious discussion, but we also uh, tried to have fun with it. Uh, Ray was great at creating conference themes and titles. I know one year when we were still the navigating the American carbon world, we had a theme of mountain climbing and we talked about provisioning uh, 
and um, um, uh, setting anchors and making a sense. And those were the names of conference sessions. Nobody knew what session they were going into because we were saying, we're going to go to the making a sense session. <laughs> Similarly, we had a year where we, we had a, a bicycling theme and it was like fastening your panniers. And people were like, what's a pannier? And <laughs> why would I want to fasten it? But that was, the, that was part of the fun of this conference is that we didn't always take ourselves so seriously. Um, you know, as I think about my own journey, I think back to that uh, when I was 20 years ago when I was in the city of Los Angeles. I had a boss at that time, a woman named Lillian Kawasaki, and she taught me an important lesson that's always stuck with me, which is the work that we do uh, in the environment, we do for people. We do it because environmental degradation, pollution affects people's lives. It worsens their lives, it affects their health, uh, it creates a whole host of uh, economic and, and uh, societal problems. And we do this work for people. And that was, that was important to me because I grew up as a child of the 60s and early 70s and Earth Day and let's save the planet. But it's really not saving the planet for the planet's sake. It was saving, saving the planet for people's sake. And we know, of course, that uh, when we think about environmental pollution and degradation, that the impacts of that disproportionately affect low-income communities and, and particularly communities of color. And that's true whether you're talking about localized air pollution or you're talking about climate change. Climate change affects low-income communities and communities of color both locally and globally. And so as I think now, 20 years later, uh, and I'm back in the city of Los Angeles, that remains kind of my guiding star is what can we do to help people and I think all of us need to be cognizant of that and think about that in our daily lives uh, because uh, that is the critical work that we do. Uh, and we don't always do it quickly enough. I'll tell you in my office, I have a, a poster uh, by Robert Rauschenberg, the artist, uh, that was produced for the 1992 Rio Summit. And on that poster, there's an there's a image of a, a newborn child that child today would be over 30 years old, probably could have attended many NACWs, could have attended many uh, cops by this point in their life. And the fact is that we've been walking our fight against climate change, not running. And we needed to be running. And at this point, we need to be sprinting because there is so much to do. So with that, I want to... Uh, conclude by issuing just a, a, a call to action and say to all of you, we need to do more, we need to demand more of our government, uh, we need to demand more of our local governments, our state governments, uh, and our federal governments, and we need to act uh, uh, decisively and quickly. So those of you who have benefited uh, by the carbon markets, I say to you, put some of that money back into strong environmental candidates, help organize around strong environmental candidates, and demand that, that your government leaders actually take aggressive actions to address climate change because we are running out of time and we need to be as uh, uh, running as fast as we can to, to the solutions. And lastly, always, Always remember, let's put people first. Thank you.